accelerated algebra two stirrup here. Hey, we just wanted to go over some of the uh, things for 5F. Uh, the big thing here is factoring. Okay, so this is something that we have to become quicker at. Make sure we feel comfortable with it. Some of you have different ways that you've done the factoring. We have a few ways that we're going to make sure we're doing okay with that. So uh, let's move on from here. All right, so what is the first step on this problem? Is I need to distribute negative 2 to both of those first, and then distribute negative 3 to both of those, and then combine your like terms. Uh, it's negative 22 plus 3, it's negative 19. That's our answer. So distribute the number before. parentheses, and then combine like terms. So you know what like terms are. All right. So let's see. I think there's some stuff I can erase on this one. Yes. So the exponents in the variable in descending order, alphabetical as well, monomial, binomial, and trinomial, where the terms with one, two, and three terms. So fill that in your notes as you need to see fit. All right, what if we need to simplify a product like this? Well, this is where, you know, we would do FOIL or double distribute. So you get x squared plus 5x minus 2x minus 10. Combine your like terms, so you get x squared plus 3x minus 10. That's very algebra 1. Uh, this one, same as well. Um, it's done the same way, so you get x squared plus the 8x plus the 3x plus 24, combine like terms. So we can also be doing it this way, where this is x squared, this is 3x, this is 8x, and this is 24, and then those are like terms that combine together. That's an 11x, and that's just scribble. All right, so if we do these kind of quickly, notice I combine 5x and, and 7x together quickly. Uh, I got 2x squared, 3x, 18x, that's 21x, plus 27. Uh, this next problem, we have uh, 3x squared um, minus 12x minus Minus 12 or minus 36x minus 7. Uh, I'm going to have to write it down because I'm doing too much in my head. Uh, plus 84. So then you have 3x squared minus, uh, what is that, 43x uh, plus 84. Last problem, just foil it. So you have 10x squared minus 2x minus 20x minus, minus 22x plus 4. So again, just simple algebra one, but I'm just trying to get it us a little bit faster on it. Same with these ones. So these should be relatively simple. You've seen these before, so 3x squared uh, plus 36x minus 7, so plus 29x, and then minus 84. And 10x squared, 2x minus 20 is negative 18x minus 4. When you have this, you have to realize that this is the same thing as this. So x squared plus 10x plus 25. And x squared minus 14x plus 49. So 4x squared plus 12x, plus 9, and then 25x squared, minus 10x, minus 10x, 10x, minus 20x, plus 4. Alright, so a lot of times with these patterns that you see, this is the first term squared, this is the second term squared, these are the two terms multiplied together and doubled. So that's the pattern that comes with those a lot of times. Uh, difference of two squares, our middle term goes away, so these are nice. 
And this, these are easy ones to forget how to do real quickly, but they do work out nicely. If you foil them out, the middle terms would go away. Difference two squares are very much used in Algebra 2 and pre-calculus quite often, so you have to be able to recognize them right away. <clears throat> now we reverse the process. So uh, a lot of these you can start doing quickly. What two numbers multiply to give you 12, add to give you 7, that would be 3 and 4. And usually how this happens is if, you're take, if you take the factors of 12, very often the two close together factors are the ones that are the factored amount. But sometimes, like on this one, this would be x minus 6, x minus 1. So that doesn't fall into the rule. So they call it the 90-10 rule <coughs> or the 80-20 rule. So a lot of times, you have the factors closest together in which factor it out. This one obviously didn't work that same way. So obviously, there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, this particular one, uh, 7 and 3 would work. And watch your signs. Both are positive there. And then on this one, I'm going to get minus 6 and plus 1. So a lot of times you're just, you're really looking at what's multiplying together to give you that, added together to give you that. So multiplied for your C term, added together to get your B term. So we did these. We're looking at uh, negative 9 and 2. On this one, we are looking at uh, positive 4 and negative 3. And again, factoring sometimes can get tough. So, you know, if you have to write them out, that's fine. But just realize you have a lot of times you need to be able to work them a little bit quicker. And so this one's going to be difference of 2 squares. So that's x plus 6, x minus 6. That has to be a, a given that you understand. 24 is also difference of 2 squares. So make sure you're able to do those quickly and recognize them. Uh, can, how can you factor a binomial? Look for a common factor, difference two squares. Those are two things that we've just done. So take a look at those. So on this first one, we have a common factor. I have a 5 and an x. If I factor 5x out of the first one, I'm left with x because 5x times x is 5x squared. And then 5x times 6 is 30x. So that can't be factored any further. Difference of two squares, x plus 7, x minus 7. Again, you want to be able to do these quickly when you look at them, especially difference of two squares. All right, zero is a function. The x-intercepts are the zeros of the function, okay? So where crosses the x-axis are what are the solutions to the problem, are the zeros of the function. Um, goes pretty well. If you look at the very bottom right corner, you have x plus 3 and 3x plus 2. Set them equal to 0. You set each binomial equal to 0 and solve it. So on this particular problem, you're going to go x minus 5 is equal to 0. So x equals 5. That's one solution. x plus 9 is equal to 0. So negative 9 is your other solution. That's where it would cross the x-axis at 5 comma 0 and negative 9 comma 0. This one we want to factor it first. So I'm going to have x minus 6 and x plus 1 is what it factors to. It's set equal to 0. So this first one would give me x equals 6. The second one would give me x equals negative 1. The variable doesn't always have to be x. It sometimes could be y. On this one, we're going to look and we're going to say, well, I can factor a 2y out of both of them. That leaves me 2y plus 1 equals 0. So you're going to have 2y equals 0, so y equals 0 is one of your solutions. And your second one, you're going to subtract 1, then divide by 2, so negative half. This is 30 is a tricky one uh, if you don't see what you're supposed to do. It has to be equal to 0, so you have to bring the 10 over and subtract it. And then from there, you're going to say y, well, x plus 5 and x minus 2 are our solutions. So you get x equals negative 5. And x is equal to 2. Those are my solutions. That where, that's where it crosses the x-axis. And that's all we have. So make sure you take a look at those. If you have questions, please bring them to class. Other than that, have a great day, everybody. Take care.